Hello everyone, in this video we're going to get started with the Canadas Design Studio and show you how easy it is to uh, create uh, simple applications uh, with the uh, Freedom Platform and the, with Canadas Design Studio. And to get started we're go just going to blink an LED and this is going to be the first of uh, three videos. In this video we're just going to focus on uh, turning the LED on and off. In the next video, we will actually measure how fast the uh, the Freedom K64F uh, can blink that LED. And then in the third video, we're going to go over implementing a real-time interrupt to uh, cause a delay in between the, the blinks uh, so that we can control you know, how fast the LED blinks. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, before we get into the the program that we're going to write. Let's go over the circuit. Uh, so here we have a single LED in a breadboard and uh, we have uh, the high side uh, connected to pin 4 of, of, uh, of J1 and the J1 header is right here, J2 header is right here. Uh, so so the, uh, we have uh, pin 4 of J1 uh, connected to the LED and then we have a current uh, limiting resistor that's a 330 ohm resistor and then ground is attached to ground which is on uh, the J2 header on pin 3. Now if you if you have a board other than uh, the K64F uh, you you won't have a board support package in the in Kinesis Design Studio so you'll need to look at these uh, these pin names up here so uh, for example, uh, pin 4 of J1 is uh, port C17. So when we go to uh, create our program, mm -hmm. you'll need to remember uh, port C17, for example. Uh, it'll be something different on your board if you have something different. Um, but since uh, we're using the K64F, Kinesis Design Studio has a board support package and, we can j and it'll be named J14. Okay? And that's but I also have the uh, oscilloscope uh, in here, and that's so in the second video we're going to measure how fast this is blinking. And uh, so let's go ahead and get into the program now. Okay, here we are in Kinesis Design Studio, and the first thing we need to do is uh, actually create a new project. Uh, I've already uh, have a couple of projects here that I've used to, to test what I'm about to do, but uh, I'm going to show you how to do it from scratch. So we're going to go to new and then Kinesis Design Studio project, and we'll give it a name, and we'll call this, uh, let's see, K64F Blinky, uh, let's call it 03, and then hit next. Uh, I'm using the K64F, and there is a board support package in here. Uh, if you are using another processor, you'll need to find that in here. Uh, for example, I also have a Freedom K06Z board, and uh, it doesn't have a board support package, but the processor is in here, and so I use that when I'm working with that processor. Um, but uh, we're using the K64F here, uh, Freedom board, not the tower. Uh, so select, select, highlight that, and then click Next. Uh, very important here, we want to make sure Processor Expert is checked. Uh, that's going to save us a huge amount of time, and it's uh, really the, the, the value in, in uh, using this tool. Um, uh, current perspective's fine. Um, I, I always change this to standalone, uh, just because I want uh, each project to have its own files, uh, so if I screw something up, I'm not screwing up for any other projects. And uh, so that's that's about it for those settings and then just hit finish and uh, uh, Design Studio will then uh, start our project here and it just takes a few seconds okay uh, with the project built let's just look to see what's here already um, Okay, so we have some basic code there already, and uh, some basic code. 
So we already have some things already started, but we want to add some code that's going to uh, do some specific things. Uh, so we're going to first switch to the processor expert perspective, and you can switch between perspectives by hitting this, these buttons up here. Go to the component library and uh, make sure that the alphabetical uh, tab is pressed. And since we're just going to want to control one pin or one bit, uh, we'll use this uh, component called bit.io. And uh, in, uh, if you want to find out anything about these, uh, these different components here, just right click on them and then you can click on help on component. And uh, so let's look at the methods for this. You can get some general information about it. But let's look at methods. Um, we're going to use a method called negval, and uh, what this does is it basically just toggles the value of a pin, uh, and that's exactly what we want to do to Blinker LED. So we're going to want to use that method, and uh, and so jot that down. We'll use it later. Um, we just look at typical usages here, and you can see here. Um, this is exactly what we're going to do, where we have bit one, bit one underscore negval, and it just inverts the output level on that pin. And so every time uh, this for loop executes, it, it toggles that uh, pin. So to add this to our project, we just make sure it's highlighted, right click, and then add to project. And it's over here. Uh, now up here, make, go to the component inspector, and you see you've got some things in red. And those are things that we need to, to fill in. Uh, if we switch to advanced up here, we can change the name of this component, uh, and uh, and that will that will actually change the name of the function that you're going to call later. So uh, just be aware of that. If uh, if you do change it, your your code might be a little bit differently. I'm going to leave it as is and keep this on basic. And uh, because we have a board support package, I can just find J1 underscore four, and that'll be the pin that we're using. Now, if you uh, don't, if you're using another processor, another Kinetis processor, uh, you'll need to find the pin name uh, from the processor. So, the, uh, for example, if we didn't have the board support package, we'd look for PTC 17 uh, from our from our schematic that we were looking at earlier. Um, we're going to set the direction to output and uh, initial value zero is just fine. Um, under the methods tab, we want to make sure that we generate the code for negval because we're going to use that method. We want to generate the code for it. And so hit generate code. And there is anything in the events that we need to do. Okay. Once you have that all set up, uh, all we need to do is go, to, go over to our, our project uh, folder here and make sure you're in the right one. Uh, right click on processor expert and generate processor expert code. And now now uh, processor expert is uh, adding that code to the project. Okay, now that's complete. I'm going to change my perspective uh, here. Let's make some more room. Um, if you're if you're using this for the first time, over here you have an outline of the the file that we have open, and I have uh, main.c open um, because we opened it earlier. And let me just close it and reopen it. So uh, make sure we got the right one. Okay. Uh, so now you've got some file uh, headers that we're, we're including here, and there's just one function which is main. That's what we expect to see in our main.c. And you need to look at these comments that. Uh, that they put in here for you. Uh, if we had any variables that we wanted to declare, we'd declare them there. Uh, and it, it gives you some warnings and don't put code here. Uh, it put it what are here it says actually write write your code here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to create a, a for loop and uh, it's going to be an infinite for loop. There are squiggly braces here and I copied uh, the function so I don't have to type it out for you there we go and so remember we called uh, our bit IO component bit one and we put that name there if you change the name of that uh, bit IO component that that name you you gave it needs to go right there 
followed by an underscore and then the method name. And so this will call that method and it'll toggle the bit IO pin. The next thing we need to do is actually go ahead and uh, build the project. And it should just take a minute. And now we go to debug. And I think I need to uh, set up my debug configuration. Uh, hopefully this works. Uh, I think I need to create one. So I'm going to create a new debug here. Um, call it that. And I showed you how to do this in another video. So I'm just going to go through it real quick. Open SDA comes up automatically. I need to find uh, the processor. It's in here somewhere. Okay, 64 F and that's it. And apply. Now we should be able to debug. Okay, and now I'm going to turn my camera on and show you how this uh, how this works. Okay, uh, as you can see now, uh, there is, is an LED already blinking on the board. Um, uh, when I paused the video, I actually went back and I reloaded an old program. And actually, it's going to be the program we end up with. It's the blinky one up here. And uh, it's a blinking LED once every second. And uh, I just did that so you can sh uh, see how the it, it changes when we load the program that we just created. Uh, so I'm back in the, the, actually I just noticed I left out the K there. Oh well, it'll still run. So I, I've built this. Uh, now I'm just going to go ahead and debug it. Uh, I use my debug there. And now, uh, okay, uh, I need to switch to my, oh, it's going to switch for me. Okay, uh, now it's in the debug perspective. Uh, you can see the LED has turned off because it has uh, loaded the new program and it has halted that program. And to get that program to actually run, we need to click this button right here uh, called resume, or we could hit F8, I suppose. And I'm going to do that, and you'll see that the LED turns on. And uh, actually, that LED is is blinking as fast as the board can make it blink. And we're going to uh, measure that in the next video, uh, but uh, trust me, it is blinking. Uh, now I'm going, just going to go ahead and halt that now and go back and look at the code just to review. And uh, we've got uh, uh, look at main here. And you can see that we have a for, a for loop and it's just uh, it's just cycling through there as fast as it possibly can and, and toggling that pin. And uh, in the next video, we will measure how fast this board can do that so that we can get an idea of the performance we can expect uh, when we write uh, other code later on. So I hope you liked this video. Please subscribe, and we'll talk again soon.